Welcome to the Foundation's Conversations at Home. I'm Janelle Riley from Variety. The Foundation has set up a COVID relief fund in order to support thousands of union performers who are going through tough times. Since March, thanks to your donations, the Foundation has given nearly $7 million in emergency aid to more than 7,000 performers and their families. If you are a sag after member and you need help, please ask. And if you can help, please give. Information can be found in the description of this video. Thank you for your support. And now without further ado, I am so thrilled to welcome the flawless ensemble cast of WandaVision. These are literally all my favorite people and they're in one show together. So please welcome Paul Bettany, Elizabeth Olson, Fiona Paris, Katherine Hahn, Kat Dennings, and Randall Park. Thank you so much for being here. <laughs> so this is an audience of your fellow SAG after actors. <laughs> so I always like to start at the beginning by asking, how did you get your SAG card? What was the, the job that brought that piece of paper to you? And let's start with Kat. Oh God, well, is it because <laughs> I was making that face? Yeah, you look like you remembered something good. I, I got mine when I was a, a little kid. Um, I, th I don't know if you can still do this, but I, I got credits for it by doing background work. Sure. This is a very long time ago. So I think I was nine or 10 and I would just, I just like, this probably isn't legal, but so don't tell any SAG reps about this, but I did like, I like walked, walked upstairs and downstairs behind somebody in like a seven up regional commercial or something. And then I like sat in an audience at a fake basketball game for two days. And then I got my SAG card. <laughs> Very uh, unglamorous. Amazing. Elizabeth, what about for you? Um, it was a, a really special movie, the first film I made after college called Peace, Love and Misunderstanding. Yeah. Yeah, really not a not a good one. Oh no, I actually like that movie. <laughs> really? I'm sorry. Then I don't then I then I have nothing mean to say about it. I don't want to take that away from you. Um I gotta work with Keener, which was awesome, and Jane Fonda and Bruce Beresford, and um we made a movie that um I, 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 you know what? I was just grateful that I got a job. I mean, that's a pretty great first job. God. It, what it, the, the list was, and then, and then I, it, it, it what yeah, I mean, I don't have much attachment to whatever that experience was, except the people. Yeah. Randall, what about for you? Um, I, 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 it was definitely illegal. Uh, uh, <laughs> There, there was this, uh, there was this service uh, that you call, you pay them $200. And uh, and they they promise you to to get you your SAG card uh, um, <laughs> <laughs> through uh, through doing uh, and they they put you in 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 union background work uh, where you, you they guarantee you the voucher was it similar cat where yeah or, I think yeah, we both did this illegally yeah yeah and uh, uh, and so they put me on uh, an episode of Arliss and an no. episode of. Uh, this show called Pacific Blue is about bike cops I remember. and then, uh, something with Casper Van Diem. And, uh, and within a month I got, I was, uh, I got uh, in the union. Not bad. Yeah. <laughs> Catherine, what about for you? Um, I think it was for uh, Crossing Jordan, which was my first show out uh, or as I affectionately called it, Crojo or Crossing Jordash. Um, <laughs> Uh, that was, a, that was the show that I, uh, that was my first show after graduate school and I got it, um, out here. I think that was where I got my SAG card. And I, I, I also remember being just because I had, I was swimming in student debt and I just remember being like, how much are the dues? Like I was, I couldn't believe how much I had to pay for A, the card and then B, the dues. But it's all worked out. It's all worked out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm so grateful. Tiana for you. Um, I think I got mine in a commercial. I, I, yeah. Okay. I'm like, can you get them for commercials? Cause that was like my first big thing. And if it wasn't that it was the movie with Catherine, um, and, uh, Reese Witherspoon called, how do you know? Cause those were like around the same time. So that was my first movie. So it was either the commercial or the movie somewhere in there. That's I forgot you two worked together before. We weren't like in scenes together, but we did, we were in the film together. And Randall, 
Wait, yeah, Randall's in that one as well. Oh, no, 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 I'm not. Oh, wait, not, wait no, no, that's the other one. That's the other one. Sorry, sorry, sorry. The other one, yeah. That's yeah. the other one. Yeah, I did a movie with Randall too. We never got to work together, but it did happen. Yep. Oh my gosh, so Tiana, cool. that was an experience. I had I had my second child during the making of that film. Well, the film took like a long time to make. <laughs> I thought that was normal. They're like, um, this is not normal. It, what was it like nine months or so or a year? It was yeah, a long was time. Was I, was like, oh, I guess this is how it goes. They were oh like, gosh, no. amazing. No, but that was it. Yeah. And Paul, what about for you? Uh, I think I got, I think I got, <clears throat> I think I was allowed one because of some deal between equity and SAG. So I think Night's Tale was, was that. And then I would, and that, so I think it was then A Beautiful Mind was the, was the, was the movie that gave me my, my, my full fledged SAG membership. Yeah. Wow, which is, I think the, that film might have gotten like a SAG nomination for the cast. So it's good you were a SAG member by then. <laughs> 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 well, again, congratulations on an amazing show. I, I know you have to be good at keeping secrets in the Marvel Universe. Um, but Paul and Elizabeth, I, I would love to know what was sort of your initial response when you were approached about the idea for WandaVision. Because it, it, it honestly... It could have gone very wrong, and yet it works so well. It walks such a fine line and works on so many levels. But what was sort of your initial response? I was, I mean, I was in, it was Kevin who pitched it to me, and um, I was really excited by it. I think I immediately was thinking um, about a Twilight Zone where the boy is obsessed with television and the bunny comes out of the television and becomes this monster. And, um, and it was cartoonish. And to me, if if we referenced anything that morphed from sitcom to Twilight Zone, I thought that could be really fun as an actor. Um, and then whether or not when we all got together and we had this amazing week as an ensemble, which you just don't get and flew everyone out, even though they didn't have to be there the first day of shooting. And um, we got to do this, um, th this table read of the entire series and, it definitely felt like we were doing something that none of us could compare it to anything that was in the world. And uh, I think we were like, well, it's either going to be terrible or we're going to do something new and exciting. <laughs> um, it felt it felt uh, crazy. Um, but we all, I think, just trusted the process and just just uh, took a leap of faith and, and went for it. Paul, what about for you? Um, <clears throat> from a very different place from Lizzie. I was convinced I was getting canned because, uh, you know, I, I, my contract was up and I, I, um, I, uh, you know, when the boss rings you up and says, come in to the office, uh, I need to talk to you. I was convinced, well, um, this is all done. And so I walked into the meeting with Kevin and Lewis and said, look, this has been a, gr I just, I didn't want anybody to feel like, you know, sticky. So I was, I was like, look, I, I, this has been a great run and, uh, and, and, and no hard feelings. I think you're great. Thank you so much. And they went, are you quitting? And I went, no, you're not firing me. And they went, no, no, we're going to pitch you a TV show. So I was poised to be really excited about the whole thing because I thought, yeah, I can keep my kids in school and everything. <laughs> it's going to be great. So, yeah. And then uh, the, the added bonus was it just seemed totally bunkers as an idea and again exactly what lizzie said you know it just felt like well we're swinging for the fences on this one and if we're gonna it's either gonna be terrible or it's gonna be kind of great but i still thought it would be the kooky you know we were supposed to come out second second up to bat so i was kind of convinced we'd be this sort of kooky cousin that people was it was very niche and people thought oh well, that was cute um so <laughs> it's really strange to see how it um really uh really hit the zeitgeist it really did and i think sometimes when you're doing something so specific it turns out to be more universal than you expected i think that's right i think we also got lucky that the whole thing takes place in a bubble and <laughs> who could have seen us all living in a fucking bubble <laughs> uh 
Kat and Randall, your characters are returning to this world. I'm curious what excited you about exploring a new story with them. I mean, I mean, Jimmy's had this arc. He's gotten really good at magic. That was like the coolest thing to see. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I I would have been happy in any context to come to bring Jimmy Wu back, just because. Uh, yeah, I love being in the in the universe, but uh, when I found out that it was this show, I was like, "This is just my speed. It's weird, and it's so different." And uh, and I, like Paul said, I I thought it was going to be niche, but in like a cool way, you know. And uh, so I was, uh, I was just so so thrilled at the response to it, and um, yeah, yeah, it was a very exciting thing to be a part of. And Cap, I'm so happy to have Darcy back. I've missed her. <laughs> oh, thank you. Me too. I I, uh, I think like Randall said, I got you know this call, and I kind of, they didn't tell us like what or they didn't tell me what show it was because I knew just from like hearing and reading about it, that, that Marvel was doing all these, all these shows. And I was like, huh, it, it has to be one of these. Right. But I thought it was going to like be one scene, maybe, you know, just come in and explain something and then leave. I don't know. Um, so uh, first the call was said, you know, would you like to come back? Would you like to bring Darcy back? And I was like, obviously, were you serious? Um, and then, um, and then I heard what, what show it was. And I just, I, I was racking my brain, like what, why why what could i be doing there like because i you know darcy didn't have any any contact with with anyone really in this in this uh world you know before it was all it was all in thorland so i was very interested in what they were doing and again i thought it was going to be a scene or two maybe um so i was just delighted i like that you call it thorland i would like to visit that <laughs> Thorland. <laughs> Um, sort of the newcomers to this world, uh, Catherine and Tiana, how much did you know about this world and these characters coming in? I mean, were you given all the scripts in advance or were there some surprises? Does, does Marvel sort of give you a crash course in the history of this world and these characters or did you already know? I just knew from watching the movies. I've been a Marvel fan, like a movie Marvel, MCU fan, I should say. I've never really read the comics until um, I booked WandaVision. Um, but so I knew like uh, Vision and Wanda's love story and their journey just from watching the movies. I didn't know anything more than that. But when I auditioned, I didn't know anything. I didn't know the show. They just said it was for Marvel. And they were not it was the sides I got to audition with were a version of the uh, scene between Wanda and Monica with the stork in um, what was that 70s, the Brady Bunch world. So you can imagine. I said, who is this for? What? I, I had no clue. And so the note they gave was just go for it. It's OK. It can be big because I was like, I don't know what to do. OK, um, so anyways, I just went for it and um, and and yeah, it ended up working out. But I was very clueless. And so it wasn't until after they said like weeks went by and then I found out I got it and I did. I, I forgot to audition for it because that's as part of my process as an actor is you do these things, you're excited. But then I just have to let it go because you you expect no all the time. And so for me, if I just release it and forget about it, then it's OK. Um, so I was very shocked when they were like, yeah, the Marvel. And I was like, oh, that that weird thing. Oh, what what was that? I don't even remember because I it was so odd. It just didn't feel like the Marvel I'd grown up watching. So they had to explain it. Then I was like, oh, great. Well, who am I? Because there was no character name, anything. So then they were like, oh, the little girl from Captain Marvel. I said, oh, stop. So it was very exciting. And then later I got scripts and had uh, conversations with Jack and Matt and Mary, um, who is our producer, about just building like who what where we were meeting Wanda and Vision and how we were going to introduce. Well, not introduce, but we'll reintroduce Monica into this world because um, we see her again now as an adult. So that was kind of my journey with it. And what an entrance she gets you know, reappearing out of nowhere. <laughs> hey guys, what's up? And getting to work alongside Kat and Randall. I mean, we just became like the little trio. It was fun. And and also just we were watching 
uh, Wanda and Vision and just that element of sometimes not being quite clear <laughs> for myself, quite clear, but getting to discover it with the characters as well. <laughs> um, so yeah, that was fun. That's amazing. Catherine, for you? I mean, first I want to say I was, I, I just echo like how, what a privilege and how excited I, I am to have been a part of something that launches this character, Tiana's character of Monica and in, into this world. It's a real thrill. And I'm so excited to see her launch into this world. We're so lucky. Um, but you I, girl, well, thank you. I, I um, but I, I I similarly like I I didn't I had watched the the films. Um, I have two children, um, who are enormous fans. I had always always in all of the loudness and all of the noise. I had always found the relationship between Vision and Wanda as being like, as being as powerful and as loud as all of the as all of the the um the explosions and the 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 stakes were as as powerful to me in their love story and to as as the like universe ending stakes and so to know that they that this was going to be delving into that and take the time to to delve into like the the emotional stakes in, a, in the Marvel universe was so compelling to me. I had gone in for a general, just like a general, which I knew that they, with uh, Lou and Mary, Lou Esposito and Mary Lovanos, our producer, and I had no expectations. But of course, in my dream of dreams, it would be to be a villain. And then in my dream of dream of dream of dreams, it would be to be a witch. And then, so to know, then to be called back three days later and to be kind of pitched the whole arc of this thing and to see that it was going to be spanning decades that I would be able to play in different worlds. It, it, it was like there, uh, 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 you could, I was like, what? It was like everything had been leading to this moment of like, and to be working with these actors, it was like, there was, I would, could not have been more, more, excited to, to play in this and to know that it was a superhero story, mm -hmm. but based in, based in a, a, a woman discovering her power ca came from her own emotional source and her from her source, that it wasn't like, you know, the spider bitter, no offense. <laughs> but I was very excited, <laughs> but I was, I, 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 or that she was what I, I was just very excited that, that the powers came from these women's own, from these women's own source was, I, I was very excited about being a part of that. And how do your kids feel about their mother being Agatha Harkness? I mean, listen, I'm their mom, so they can't, they can't tell me. But my daughter, my daughter did write a note to me after seeing the finale that I will f say forever that said, you're such a badass, mom, I love you. And I was, I will hold on to that forever. And I will not chastise her for calling me a badass. I she, love that. she spelled it correctly. So <laughs> give her points for that. <laughs> You know, you, you mentioned these wonderful character moments and, and this show is so epic and fun. Um, and it's so wonderful that they're able to incorporate these character moments. And so much has been made of the chemistry of these characters, not just Paul and Elizabeth, but Elizabeth and Catherine and Kat and Randall. I, actually, Kat and Randall, I don't know if you know that there's like a whole subsection of people rooting for your characters to get together. <gasps> they Romance! Shipped? Shipping? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're being shipped. Wow. I have not heard that. I, I've heard of a, a like a spinoff series with Cat and Ram, people calling for that, but uh, but not not a uh, not a relationship. That's 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 cool. I'm, I'm honored just to be shipped near you, Randall. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it seems like you know such a fun cast. Did you all just click instantly? I guess Paul and Elizabeth, you probably go back the furthest. Did you know that you know from the first time you worked together, you would have this relationship that would you know go on for years? Uh, no, 
Um, Joss Whedon wanted to suggest uh, it in Ultron, not knowing if Marvel would pick up what he was throwing down. And um, they, they did, luckily, but it, it wasn't really part of um, a, a long plan other than Joss's, I think, like uh, personal desire. And so we would just, we, we put, we sprinkled in uh, stolen glances. And then he obviously was the person to rescue me when I kind of give up at the end. And um, yeah, right, Paul? <laughs> uh, uh, yes, that's right, Lizzie. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, no, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't know, we didn't know that, but I think pretty quickly we recognized that, um, it was a pretty great lane to swim in because the Avengers really needed a, a, a different tone somewhere in all of the fast talking, you know, wisecracking stuff that's going on to have this really quite sweet, earnest relationship between an ingenue robot and a, and a, and a, a nascent witch is, uh, is, is, is kind of a fun thing. And very different from the rest of the show. So, I, I mean, it was surprising... <clears throat> You know, I was wondering whether whether people were going to accept an entire show that was about love and grief, and and you know, uh, uh, and it was fantastic to see that people really, really did. Much down to our brilliant um, Jack Schaefer and her amazing writers room, and Matt Shatman, who has you know, it can't be forgotten, has been on this project for over two years. And uh, and of course Kevin Feige, my captain, my captain, and uh, who endlessly had faith in this, uh, you know, and and really loved the show. And I, um, it was it was such a it was such a joyous experience with everybody. Such an explosion of creativity, welcoming new people to the family, welcoming people that I were in the other bit of the family that I hadn't met, and and I uh, we all um, we all just really I I it's it's the best time I've ever had um, uh, making a show. I I, I I loved every second of it. And Lizzie was saying something earlier, which I'm just going to steal now, about um, about how how joyful it was and how exhausting. And often when you're making something that is exhausting, as, as shows can be to make, it just sort of compounds you down and you compact it. But the, the amount of love and joy and creativity from everybody just kept us so buoyant. And I, I, it's been one of the pleasures of my life making that show. I mean, you can prepare to play these characters. You can even play them for years. But how much does it help each of you when you, you know, step into those costumes and that hair and makeup and make that final transformation into your role? I mean, these these costumes in every episode and in every era are so stunning and really help take us through these different eras. Um, and I'd love I'd love for Tiana to, uh, Tiana sorry to um, to talk about this because I think your character has like the most um, the biggest fashion transformation if you will. <laughs> um, yeah, so going from knowing that we I would start in the '60s um, and get to do the '70s as well, um, and then switch to modern Monica. Um, going through that process with Maya's and her team was really, it was really dope. I mean, just the amount of work and detail that went into all the eras and particularly um, that of modern Monica, just all the small things that to make it comfortable. I'm like, oh my, is there's a hip there? Can we put some spandex in this place? Like just the amount of uh, willingness to collaborate and make it a a process that told the story she wanted and also was comfortable and helped tell the story I also imagined for the character and that of Matt and uh, Jack. So, yeah, I mean, it was sometimes I felt I definitely felt like I'm in completely different shows. Mm -hmm. um, like one day we're in the 60s and I have the Afro and fish bell bottoms and then you you have to switch and go to the 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 pop-up base it was very um jarring but i kind of think that's easier than what like paul and lizzie and Catherine had to do because 
every day they were in a different decade and just the amount of attention and detail that they put into like nuancing each decade, like sometimes I was like three in a day or something y'all would end up doing, Lizzie. I was like, girl, how are you keeping up? Um, But yeah, so I mean, I think that was definitely like what Paul, Lizzie and Catherine had to do was to me even more uh, just amazing uh, because it was so many and they're just so different and the details. So yeah, um, yeah. I That's think a is a genius. I think she's a genius. Uh, I, th- I think her work is, it, it, it has been consistently extraordinary. And I had, I was only specific about one thing which I didn't like in the seventies. And I, and she said, well, what is it you see? And I say, I want it to look like I traveled back in time and that I wrestled Robert Redford to the ground and stole his clothes and hair from three days at the Condor. And then that's, 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 that's what they did for me. <laughs> I, I love it. So I do feel like there was a, because going back to Matt Shackman, our director, and the rehearsal period that we were able to have before um, we began, that that there was a feeling of a rep company, and maybe the actors that are watching this would understand that because that feeling of like uh, having that sense of like a rep company that made the shifts a little bit easier from decade to to decade that we just had that muscle memory too of just being able to feel like we were in summer stock basically that it didn't feel like overwrought like it just we just kind of were able to like do it like we already we'd had the experience under our belt of like doing a show in front of a live audience like you know, which was kind of jumping into the abyss together. So we were and we, you know, were all able to do like so it just kind of felt like we were a a theater company that was just doing, put it, you know, that we were doing, you know, Lear one night and like another, you know, a comedy one night and something else one night and something else one. So it it did take the like, um, I don't know if you guys felt that too, but it it definitely, it it definitely felt like we were like a rep, a little rep company. 100%. 100%. And also, I think that, you know, uh, Tiana was, was there at the recording of the yeah. uh, uh, of the show. We were bumping into each other backstage and we shot it in one day. And um, and you what was what was amazing, we also looked at each other on, on the stage and out at Tiana in the back of the audience going like this. And you go, well, I guess that's the tone of the show then because, <laughs> because we, as, uh, uh, you know, as Catherine says, we had just leaped, we'd made the decision. This is what it's going to be. And there's no going back now. So, um, yeah, it was, it was a, it was a lovely feeling of a company is exactly right. It felt like a company and actors. Yeah. I like that too, because it definitely at moments felt like, uh, I've said this with Lizzie for sure, that sometimes you felt like, I felt like, oh my gosh, this is so extra. I am doing way too much. Um, and that would be like, no, no, it's good. And so we really, I had to really lean on my fellow actors and just connect in the eye. Like, look, I'm sorry if it's too much. I'm kind of doubting myself. But at the same time, you look over there and they're going for it too. And so you, I had to let it go. Like, just go for it. Trust Matt, trust my partner. A lot of that I felt with uh, Lizzie because that was where most of my um, period scenes were with Lizzie. Just like, okay, I'm gonna go for it. And just trusting my my castmate, my troop member, and just saying, you know, we in this together. I guess we'll both look crazy if we both doing too much, <laughs> but let's go for it. So definitely that sense of ensemble. Randall, were you sort of jealous to see all these people changing costumes and eras, or were you like, you know, kicking back and, and enjoying uh, your, your single costume fitting? I'm sure there was more than one. Uh, yeah, no, no, there was really one. Uh, I mean, other than like, <laughs> other than like the shirt and, and maybe a tie change here and there, it was pretty much wearing the same thing throughout. Um, yeah, no, I, you know, I, I was like, yeah, it would have been cool to see, uh, to, to, to exist in, in that world, but it, it also felt right for me to 
be on the outside, mm -hmm. feeling what I was really feeling uh, in real life, which was, how is it like in there? You know, like, what, what's it like in that sitcom world? Because I wasn't there at the tapings uh, and I didn't get to see that. Uh, so it was really, uh, you know, it, it helped me in that sense in that I, I, I really didn't know what was going on, you know, uh, on that side. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, it was, uh, but it was, I was happy. I was happy just to be there. I was happy just to be there. I mean, Darcy actually has that line where she's like, you know, I'll admit it. I wanted to be a guest star and, <laughs> and Kat get, you get to straddle both worlds and you actually like you pull off the circus costume really well. Well, and that's because of Maya's. <laughs> that's because of the costume team and Maya's is genius. She actually, um, I'll just say what everyone was saying. She is so, she's such an unbelievable artist. She cares so much about every little thing. And, you know, Darcy is pretty much just a glasses and a beanie, you know, at, at her core, you know, that's, that's really the, the whole thing. But she had so many more ideas and she had this color story that she wanted this teal. She, the most romantic thing anyone has ever said to me was she was like, this teal, it's, I, I want to match everything to your eyes. And I was like, what? my God, thank you. I also didn't realize I had teal eyes, but if she insists. Um, so, you know, that that circus outfit, um, the inside, you never even see it, but the whole thing was lined with this red silk. It was just exquisite, like from top to bottom. She just, every detail was beautiful. And the, the shoes, like she dyed all the leather, you know, everything was perfection. And, and you know, there were like, four pairs of pants and four jackets, just in case I ate too many biscuits or whatever, you know, it's just, it was, it was so exciting as any, you know, even down to the, and this is props, but her, you know, Darcy's glasses, when she goes into the hex change to this, these retro um, things. And yeah, if, if, if you look, you can see that they start as the regular and go up to the cat eye glasses and um, props department also so incredible. And mm. the detail so amazing. And my glasses all have my real prescription in them. They asked me ahead of time because I, I cannot see a true story. Um, just everyone, collaboration from top to bottom. And I was so excited to go in but not be fully immersed. I didn't have to do like a transatlantic accent or anything. Thank God no one would have wanted that. Um, so, yeah, it was really fun. <laughs> Uh, you referenced these amazing episodes that you shot with an actual live studio audience. Um, Elizabeth, I've been lucky enough to see you on stage, so I know that's that's really where you began. Uh, was it great to sort of get back to those theater roots? And how, how does that live audience sort of affect the performances? It's crazy you've seen me on stage. What? <laughs> Twice at Atlantic, yeah. Oh, how cool. Um, that's, a, that's, that's very funny. Um, there's not very many people I feel like I could say that. Um, I wish I'd done more. And I, you know what, it, it made me more feel like I was a child in my summer camp. That's what I really felt like, just hamming, hamming it up, winking at the audience, and just like pure joy, um, just pure joy of, of, of having an audience. And, and the, thing, the thing that I had uh, trouble with, and again, since we only filmed it once with an audience, I couldn't learn from was um, not playing to the audience and playing to the mm -hmm. camera. <laughs> I've, I've never done a sitcom. I didn't, I, I didn't know that that, that was gonna be a thing that uh, I would be maybe projecting too much or something, but but I do feel like the the energy and the adrenaline of that episode is because of that that live experience that you get, um, and it it was it was so scary. It was so scary. It was so fun, but it was so scary. <laughs> but and then and then the moment the sixties came, we closed up the walls. I felt so safe. I was like, oh yeah, okay, okay, okay. Now I figured out the I figured out the language, I figured out the speed, or you know, starting to feel a bit more comfortable with the technical side of um manners or voice or um inflection and 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 whatnot. But the 50s one was just it just felt like yeah, I was naked the whole time. <laughs> It's such a, a beautiful looking era, though. I love the hair and the costumes and, you know, you, you really got to run the gamut in this show. Yeah, it was um, it. I, I can't really think of a, of a more um, enjoyable gift 
you know, all the all the nerdy stuff that we love to do as actors and prepare and and change how we how we talk, how we walk. And, you know, you kind of sometimes forget that um, that we have legs when we're making movies and to to think about our legs and our posture more and then and then to then do it within a genre tone and then to shift it uh, according to the decade and then to play with these in between moments of the real MCU world coming, um, confronting the sitcom and playing with, you know, the, the decade specific genre, like a Twilight Zone moment. And, you know, just those, it was just so fun to play multiple levels. Mm -hmm. And the seventies, I think was so much fun because of that. And, um, we had to film multiple versions of scenes because it came back later. And so that was kind of confusing knowing which episode we were in. But um, but it really it really was such a fun challenge. And you really just had, you know, you had to really understand what was going on because um, you get lost real quickly. <laughs> I mean, Paul, you also obviously have a, a huge stage background, but Vision has been, you know, by nature, you sort of a stoic character. What was it like to play him, but, you know, in these sitcom tropes and like he really gets to get emotional in these scenes? Uh, yeah, I, I um, yeah, I was worried about that. I, I thought, how's it still going to be Vision? Mm -hmm. And um, I thought, well, actually, Vision's just really decent. And, you know, he's always been... Um, other, you know, he's sort of made, he's partly Ultron, he's partly Tony Stark, he's partly Jarvis. I thought, all right, well, we'll throw a bit of Dick Van Dyke in there uh, and see what happens. And, 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 um, and, uh, and it was okay. You know, I was, I was, I was really concerned that it was just not going to make any sense to anybody. Um, but it, 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 it worked out probably because I got the same face. You know, I think actors worry a lot about continuity and you go, Oh, I got the same face. They're going to think it's me. So, um, uh, but it was really, it was really lovely. The whole experience. I mean, there's a scene back where we go back to, I don't know, what is it? Is it Civil War Lizzie? Where we go back to the Avengers compound? I think it is. Mm -hmm. and, and I was really worried about the scene. I felt like um, we hadn't quite got there. And it was just such a collaborative experience with, with the with the writers and with Matt and with Lizzie and then we finally got to this place where he says this um, the robot says this really wise you know Vision says this really wise thing to to Lizzie and and because it's coming from this sort of ingenue uh, robot it doesn't feel preachy and because that was the thing I was really worried about. You know, it was like a, a robot trying to figure out, well, there's got to be a sort of reason for grief. I mean, what, it, what, what is it? And it was just, it was just such a the whole experience was just so collaborative and imaginative and, and, um, and I, I love, I, I love everybody on this call and I adore you all. And you were all so punctual and I loved that. <laughs> <laughs> That's important. For people to show up yes, on time. It, yes, it is. I hate actors that are late. It's the worst. By the way, you're you're downplaying it a bit. You're talking about the uh, what is grief, if not love persevering line. Did, did you have any idea it was going to explode the way it did? I mean, that line affected people so mm. much. We worked on it for a very long time because I still thought it wasn't there. And, and, and then um, Jack... Uh, it wasn't her episode that she's, you know, was running the room and everybody was getting together and trying to figure out that line. And, and this is how collaborative it was. It was, we, they got to somewhere like what is grief, but love continuing. And Jack's assistant, who is a genius in her own right, and we're going to see a, hear a lot about her, came in she went, persevering. And everybody went, persevering. And, 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 and. and <laughs> And that was it. So I, I was glad that it landed because we'd worked a long time on trying to nail that down. Yeah, I mean, landed is an understatement. It's, you know, I, I don't I don't know if you're aware of, you know, there were people like that said, like, you just heard a collective gasp around the world when you said that. <laughs> well, 
Well, that's really lovely. Um, I think it's more to do with the fact that the camera's on Lizzie when the uh, line is said, which I think was a very smart decision. <laughs> <laughs> I was probably wildly overacting at that point. <laughs> Um, something else I was surprised to learn, obviously uh, you're in this world with these amazing visual effects, but a lot of times it was practical effects. You had, you know, food on strings and things like that. I, I'm, I'm curious, um, first of all, for people who like, Catherine, I don't know if you've worked, you know, with visual effects before where you're, you know, 20 feet in the air and you have a, a fan on you um, and Tiana as well. Is, is this a new experience for you? Did, did they give you any hints on, you know, sort of adapting into this world? Lizzie was an enormous guide for me in all of these things. I did, there was a lot that I needed help with. Every time they said balls and charts at the end of a take, I was, had to look, I had to, A, not make a joke, and B, I had to, I had to be asked what it was because they, every, after every take for, I guess, for special effects, they had to, they bring in a silver ball and I guess a chart, and then they have to just roll on a ball. And then they put in the special effect. I, I, I'm still confused by it, but I, I would always be like, why, why, why? And everyone would be like, eh. very patient with my mouth, my questions and my lower jaw on the ground because I was so in awe of what they would do, these people, these amazing artists. And that the flexibility of these artists from decade to decade that like Lizzie had said that they, when when you see the plates on the strings in or you don't even see the strings, but that those plates, the magic in the 50s were just was practical magic, which I think is a movie um, <laughs> on strings. Those are the same guys that were then doing all, all the stuff in the later episodes, like the, their flexibility. I, I'm just in awe of, of that whole world. And I'm also have fallen madly in love with the stunt world. Like, I, and I am just so grateful to Whitney, who is my stunt double. And I, and she is like such a part of who I, who Agatha is like, she is, a a Agatha to me, like we made her together. And that's something I did not anticipate as a performer because I have such like, um, I guess autonomy for who I build. And so that was a real great lesson for me of letting go and, and also realizing that this bird, Agatha is made of so many artisans, Mayas, Cindy, my hair, V, my, my makeup artist. Like there's so many people that there was this, that she like, when we finally, when she finally like rose up on, when I finally like got to do the wires, which was so crazy, it, it, amazing. I, I mean, I had just been like doing small scenes, whatever, in parking lots <laughs> with like a camera, like to like, finally like rise up on a thing, on these wires and no feel how many people had like built this bird was like such a beautiful moment to know like that it was a co a, so collaborative. So that was a really special feeling, N new and really um, you felt the weight of how many people had been making her and for you and with you. And that was a really, really special. Tiana, was it similar for you? Uh, definitely. Um, and I think with me, with the, the green screens and the stuff around, I am a very like I can't hide my in my face. I, I'm not a great actor in my you know <laughs> like it's gonna come out. So I remember the first time they lifted me on the um <laughs> wires. It's the scene where Lizzie is pop, or Wanda is popping pills and I burst in and I was like ah oh we did not practice this. Um no I, oh I don't know it was a lot. But in those moments like. I would watch Lizzie and Paul. I, it was like, I felt like I was in school all over again or some kind of learning setting, which we always are, but especially here. And just watching Lizzie navigate or Paul navigate 
I don't know, a green screen, someone over here, someone in a green outfit in their face and they're like locked in. And I'm I'm looking around because I'm distracted, (laughs) very distracted. And they are here. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, I got to be here for them. But what is that person doing? What is happening behind them? It was a lot of having to refocus um, because there was so much going on. But they like they were just they didn't see, I don't know if they didn't see it, but to me, it's like they, it, they learned how to just hone in on what we were trying to do and the, the thing that was happening between us. So I do need to work on that. Um, but it was amazing to just watch them. And then I also just realized like when I was thinking about the whole process afterwards, like in, um, like pedestrian or like regular, I don't know, regular films, like normal, just everyday life, not special effects and things. You use a lot of like the props and the things in in stuff can be, um, can happen in the moment because there are tangible things around you and your imagination is different. Um, With this, I realized there's another level of my process that I need to add Um, because my imagination needs to do different things. Like I need to get better at seeing, trying to see what it is on the page so that I can imagine it. It, it, Like an example is you watch it and you're like, oh my gosh, I didn't know that was blowing up behind me. Like, why didn't I respond to that? You know what I mean? Or this happened. And so having to, the realization that I have to add another step in my process in these sorts of films of trying to really pin down what is actually around me, what is happening, because maybe I could interact with it or have some kind of, it could just be there in in my body. Um, But it it was helpful because they had this thing called um, pre-visual, previs, previs, so that we could see it on a iPad or something beforehand. But I think there's still a level of which shit Paul and Lizzie have clearly mastered of just having it in your head and being able to interact with it um, in the moment, but it's not there. It's a whole other skill that I'm I'm trying to learn. Oh, you're amazing. I mean, you're amazing. I mean, and also like, I realize sorry to even pop in, but like, you're uh, amazing. And it's like an actor is an actor. Like you're, you're always using your imagination. Like, you know, even if you're in just a regular, whatever you call like pedestrian street scene, like you're still imagining that there's not a camera in your face and a boom there. And that there's a light there. And then there's like somebody standing there waiting with it. You know, like we're always imagining it's never just us talking. On a right. Screen. But so it's practical. Like you can, right. like things can happen and you can yeah. react to it. This, it won't happen in the right. moment. You, you have, have to know. Flying behind you. Yeah, yeah. Like you got to know so you can add that into your reality. Yeah. It's, it was like this whole other thing that was. Kind it's, of it's, no. it's, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's why I, I, remember. With, uh, I remember watching Infinity War and at the premiere and I like look out a window and they told me there's going to be like something tumbling. And what I see is like, um, so huge and has so much energy. And I just like, I'm so solemn and quiet. <laughs> I'm like no energy in the scene. And I was like, Oh my God, why didn't they tell me that that was going to be crazy loud chaos. And I'm just like, so solemn, like just turning. And I, and I remember that moment and thinking, well, shit, if I, if something is happening, someone needs to yell a name, yell just anything at me to, to wake me up and react normally because I was so mad that that made the final cut. I was like, really? No, this is such a stupid reaction. <laughs> I, I 100% remember going through that experience, Tiana, with, when, when Lizzie and I were first starting on this thing. And Lizzie, I remember, <laughs> I remember doing this thing and it was like a split second. Uh, you know, like two seconds of screen time. So I was like, I, I'm not happy, but I'll just let it go. It's two seconds of screen time. And then we did something else. And I was like, yeah, I just don't think I really got that. But don't worry about it. It's two seconds of screen time. And I'm going to Lizzie. I don't think it matters. It's two seconds of screen time. She went, 
it's all two seconds of screen time. So they're going to add all that stuff up. It's all going to be that. And I was like, oh shit, that's true. <laughs> and, and because it's really hard to do. And, and Lizzie and I used to look at um, Scarlett Johansson, who's just brilliant at that. She's just brilliant at that. She knows exactly what's going on. She, and she gives that trailer moment. And I just get the giggles whenever I'm doing, <laughs> when I'm doing something like that. And Lizzie was just like, I don't know, Paul, man, they're going to add all these two second bits that you're talking about into one long performance. I was like, oh boy, she's right. Wow. So yeah, I remember feeling very, oh. she really terrifying thing. She said, she said, and remember more people are going to see this than see anything else you ever do. <laughs> and I went, well, I say that a lot when it comes to Marvel. <laughs> like no pressure, but this is what people are going to like, like people are, you know, cause there's so sometimes on the movies you do like the smallest moment all day long. And on our show, we were doing like seven pages at least on average a day. And it was chaos. And we had to, you know, move quickly and like work quickly. Everyone had to work quickly on these movies. They're so lethargic though. They're just so lethargic that you just like, you just, you just forget that like that there are like crazy stakes involved yes well i i actually also really want to give credit to randall and cat who um you know people who who don't have powers in this world you really keep it grounded and you know uh make it as realistic as possible and I, I'm, I'm sort of curious like what's the key to you know some pretending like you're acting opposite something amazing happening and a real person, you don't have superpowers and <laughs> keeping those performances so real. Mm. I mean, do I keep it like that? <laughs> <laughs> you're very, you're both very relatable characters. So I would say yes. Wow. I mean, I, I, I'm so thankful to the writers for making Darcy a, an astrophysicist, which is extremely relatable for me as an actor. I had a lot to, <laughs> to identify with. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, it's kind of, I kind of got the easy job in ter except for the, the science terms, which I was uh, terrified phonetically spelling out for myself in my little notebook. Um, I, you know, it's so, it's so much fun to just watch all these incredibly hardworking people do the wires and the extreme temperatures and all that stuff. And I just get to sit back and be like, ha, 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 blah, 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, same. It, it was, uh, I mean, again, I just had to wear one uniform, you know, it was so easy and fun and, uh, and, uh, and, you I know, learned card tricks. Oh, that's right. I learned a card trick. That's right. Uh, uh, but uh, yeah, and I remember like the scene where where Lizzie comes out of the hex with the with the uh, with the little uh, uh, plane thing, and she throws it, and she's just and I remember us just kind of all standing there, just watching her, and she was just so incredible. Like every time she did it, I was just like so pulled into the scene. It was like easy to yeah. I, I didn't even feel like I was acting. I was just kind of t taking her performance in and 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 reacting accordingly. And it was, it was really uh, uh, in that way, just easy and fun, you know? And we were so cold. Were you so really? cold and you, yeah, and you were still oh. like killing it. No, I was, um, I was making crazy sounds. I think <laughs> my body, like. I heard you yelling across the field. I was like, is she okay? I was just, I was just trying to get my blood going. I was so freaking cold that night. I'm not the guy. And you guys had so many of those nights. You guys had so many night shoots and rain and I had one and I was miserable. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, as soon as they yelled action, you were just, you just in. Went right in. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm so sad that we're out of time, but before we go, I, I, I do want to ask, um, in addition to all the amazing below the line elements on the show, I mean, you have Oscar winning songwriters composing theme songs for you. And, and Catherine, I don't know if you're aware that uh, Agatha All Along was like the number one um, downloaded song. It's actually my ringtone. <laughs> <gasps> Are you serious, Janelle? Yeah. That is so awesome. I think I, there's, a, there's a ringtone version of it. I don't know if you can hear it. Hey, Probably not. Hey, hey. <laughs> it's so anyway. good. Um, what's it like to have your own theme song? 
I mean, I was, I knew I had heard that I was going to get a theme song when I was pitched the show, but I did not know I was going to be singing it. <laughs> and I did not know what it was. And so when I heard it for the first time, I, I mean, I flipped out. And then when I heard it was the Lopez, it's like, I mean, forget it. But like they did it for every when yeah. we heard it for every decade, like leading up to it. I mean, they are delicious. Every single one of them is like is more gorgeous than the one before. Like they're in, in, incredible, all of them. But yeah, I, I mean, this was something I did not see in my cards when I was <laughs> <laughs> growing up in Cleveland, Ohio. I, no. Can you imagine what this makeup bus was like? I mean, it was the is the best makeup bus has ever been. I mean, you know, you, you knew when, when you opened that door, you knew what Catherine was in there because the, the, you just opened it and everything started to crackle. She was, and you, you know, it was, and you get... You know, a bunch of us on that makeup bus. It's the best. It was like a party. It was like a party at six a.m. I, I it was the best cast ever. When Paul Just, says makeup bus, he he means hair and makeup trailer. Like, what is the makeup bus? But yeah, yeah okay. he, just, he just means uh, the hair and makeup trailer. Okay. Uh, Criticism coming out yeah, again. I love a makeup bus. I want to be on a happy makeup bus so badly <laughs> with, with you people again. I really do. Please, I mean, I, I know you might not know or you might not be able to talk about the future, but I, I cannot wait to see what happens next. I want that uh, Jimmy Darcy uh, show to happen, please. I want to see more of that. I want to thank you all so much for being here. Congratulations on, I mean, just the show that does everything. It's so fantastic. And I so appreciate you taking the time to talk to us today. So good thank to see you. you. Thank, thank you so, thank you so much. much.